it's clear. We need to get Wall Street out of education. And we're here today to take the first step by introducing the Protections and Regulations for Our Students Act, also known as the Pro Students Act. This legislation will aim to improve accountability and protect students from bad actors in the for-profit college sector. Just this past week, it was revealed that by defrauding and misleading thousands of students, students such as Michael right here, the collapse of Corinthian colleges could cost American taxpayers $214 million. With that in mind, it's obvious that Michael, one of the Corinthian 100, and thousands of other students should be allowed to discharge their student loan debt, and I'm proud to see them here taking a stand. These for-profit institutions are taking advantage of everyday Americans who are just trying to better themselves, including single mothers and veterans. They spend more money on marketing than instruction. As a result, these institutions often resort to overly aggressive and deceitful recruiting and marketing tactics, going after students' federal student aid dollars. At the same time, they leave their students with unsustainable debt, worthless credits and certifications and degrees, and dismal job prospects. The for-profit college industry enrolls just 13% of all post-secondary school students. But get this, they account for nearly half of all the student loan defaults. It's no wonder that more than 30 states' attorney general, the CFPB, the SEC, the FDIC, and the Department of Justice are all investigating for-profit colleges for fraudulent practices. But simply forgiving student loans is not enough. We must do something about these types of institutions. The Pro Students Act is designed to improve accountability and protect our nation's students. It will strengthen oversight and regulation and make sure that students have access to important and accurate information. And it will hold schools accountable for violations and poor performance. With this legislation, we can help ensure that our student and taxpayer dollars are being well spent and that students are receiving quality, affordable education. When I walked into Everest offices, it was, a, it was a good game they talked. You're gonna have a very quality experience. You're gonna have hands-on experience with emerging and current technologies. But that turned out to be false. Instead, I worked on a lot of outdated software, obsolete hardware, and knowing that everything is constantly moving forward in the world of technology it didn't seem right to be going over things that have already been out for, well, 15 years. By the end of my program, I, I felt really disheartened and starting to look at my prospects, nothing was turning up. It wasn't until very recently that a former classmate of mine disclosed to me that by technical recruiter standards, our resumes were tossed aside once they saw that we had Everest on it. Oh, he's got an Everest computer information science degree. Next. It wasn't until he had experience with a public community college that he was taken seriously and was finally able to find work. So in the meantime, I haven't been able to find good prospects as far as information technology goes. There's plenty of other students and other programs that haven't had any luck in finding any work as well. And knowing that a lot of my classmates were former veterans, also infuriates me to think that their post 9-11 GI bills were just taken advantage of by this for-profit institution. It's really really awesome to have this kind of support from everyone including the representatives with us here today. I think this is groundbreaking. It's something that is very necessary. If someone had sat down with me when I was shopping for a college said well this is the difference between a for-profit, a non-profit, a public college, a public university. I would have made a different decision. I would not have gone for a for-profit institution. It's important that we make the proper steps toward a better future for everybody so that students, prospective students, can walk into colleges feeling confident that they're gonna know everything they need to know 
before deciding on where and what their higher education experience is going to look like. Thank you guys. Great, great. Many people know we represent 1.6 million people, including K-12 teachers, but we represent over 200,000 faculty and staff at colleges and universities across the country. Our members are out there every day helping students climb up that ladder of opportunity. What Michael just said was why we wrote to Secretary Duncan yesterday and said, you have to discharge the debt. You can't actually make students who've already been defrauded beg for a discharge. We are a country that tells students that college is really important, but then allows predatory institutions like Corinthian to stick them with crippling debt, worthless degrees, and an uncertain future. And that's why the Pro-Students Act is so important, because it will actually require for-profits to be transparent about what they do. And it will give students like Michael the information they need to make a real decision. And then when the bad actors actually act badly, something will happen to them instead of happening to the students who are trying to get a degree. And people all across America are gonna say to the Congress, Republicans and Democrats alike, don't come home until you solve the problem of crippling debt so that Michael and other students can actually really not just dream their dream, but achieve them. Thank you. We have schools that go out purposely to mislead students about what they can expect from their education. And that's why Mr. Takano's bill is so important because we're talking about federal dollars here. We're talking about taxpayers who are funding the bill for college experiences that go nowhere. And that's why they have to be accountable. That's why we have to take them uh, to task about how to do this better. Our country will benefit. Our young people will benefit. These for-profit colleges, for-profit definitely describes them. It's not for education. It's not for the future of America. It's not for employment. It's for-profit. And they are really public schools because 90 plus percent of their monies come from the federal government and they get 25% of all the Pell Grants that otherwise could be going to increase Pell Grants at state colleges, not-for-profit schools. When you compare the dollars that are spent for, on each student at a for-profit versus a not-for-profit, it's astounding. And you look at the salaries of the CEOs, $7.3 million was the average salary of a for-profit CEO. They have taken federal Pell Grants Instead of taking them as a way to subsidize students' educations, they've taken them as a way to create an industry and make themselves, sometimes their stockholders and other owners, rich. And the reason it's been difficult to get anything done during the nine years I've been in Congress is because of the pernicious influence of financial contributions by these people to both Democrats and Republicans at outrageously large levels, and they have stopped reform. This is outrageous, and it needs to end. This is part of the greater good you know, and when I think about a certain saying that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one, it was just a natural response for me to say, let me be a part of this. I will put forth 110% and because I know that this will not only impact my life and the lives of other students that have been affected by this, but going forward, the very children that I am passionate about will have a better platform uh, to step into when they are of age to get into college and higher education. This is. This is for them as much as it is for the rest of us.